Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be replacing the pressure relief valve here on my boiler, which is a Wild McLean HE2 hydronic heat system. Um, the boiler, the pressure valve back here, I think you can see it in this clip. So there it is. Uh, you can see it's been leaking for a while. It's gotten a lot of mineral deposits built up around it. It'll eventually seal itself off with that, but then it'll drip a little bit more and then leave some more, seal up with some more deposits and that sort of thing. So we're gonna get, get that taken care of, replace it before we need to use this boiler again. It's a summer right now, so I don't need it. So we can just take our time and do this right. And then next fall, when I have to turn it on, it'll be ready to go. So here we go. We're gonna start by isolating the water system and draining the boiler. Okay, so on this boiler, it's pretty easy to isolate the boiler itself. Um, I have two zone valves up here for either upstairs or downstairs. Uh, those are off because the thermostats are off. So those are currently shut off and closed. This one is for the makeup water that is closed. And then over here we have the water coming into the boiler. Um, down here, I can turn off the water right coming to the in inlet side of the pump and also below the pump as well. Um, there's another one. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this one off here. Shut this one off here. And now we should be able to open up the drain valve down there and that should take all the water out of the boiler um, so we can go ahead and open up that relief valve back there without getting sprayed. Okay, getting it started is a little tricky. Um, it was faced in kind of a weird way. It does have these flat spots on both sides. You can kind of get um, either a crescent wrench or I'm using a channel lock on it. Um, I just had to open it up as wide as I possibly could and get it around the whole thing. And then I was able to get it to go because it's the way it's facing. I couldn't get a wrench on it because of the, the board back here. But now we got it moving. Um, so we'll just keep keep twisting it around. Uh, yeah, it's loose. So it shouldn't be a problem to get it to go from here. There we have it. I guess just to compare, this is the old one. This is the new one. Both have the um, three quarter inch threads on them. Yep, that's correct. Um, identical, pretty much in function. So it shouldn't be a problem to install this. Or right, the other one went in. Just a lot less uh, buildup on it. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up those threads. Get them nice and shiny like new. And then we'll put some pipe dope on and get this threaded in. Just another important thing to point out when you are finding an equivalent valve to the one you have certainly make sure that this part of the, about the pressure here is the same set 30 psig which is 30 pounds per square inch gauge um, for a boiler you really don't want to get high pressure for a water system you're going to be up you know somewhere you know 60 plus um, psi you don't want to do that for your boiler boiler's going to run you know 10 to 15 so definitely don't want to have too high one there or it's not going to do what it's supposed to do which is keep your system safe so check that before you buy a replacement okay as you saw me cleaning off there it's using some vinegar um, just a toothbrush and then a little wire brush to get that nice and clean. Um, now we're going to go ahead and use some um, pipe joint compound or pipe dope to seal up these threads here. You can use Teflon tape too. A lot of people do that. I've just found that uh, I had better results with this. So that's what I've been sticking to. That's what I do. So I'm going to squeeze some of this around the threads and then we'll go ahead and put it back there into the pipe.
Okay, now we're gonna thread this in. The trick here is going to be um, making sure this thing ends up tight and facing a direction that we want it to face. So we'll go ahead and start threading it in. tag seems kind of cumbersome but I'm going to leave that on there because when I or someone else has to replace it it's nice to know what kind of um, valve it was so it's easy to find a replacement and just like it. Okay it's starting to get tight here. Um, I'm hoping I can make it around one more time with the tool and get this thing facing kind of back towards us a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get the tires on. I don't want to over tighten it. Um, I really just hope to get it just as tight as it has to be and no more uh, let's see what we can get here, this last extra bit. Okay, I'm gonna leave it just like that. Um, that way if I need to turn it a little more eventually to make the leak stop, I have a little bit of room to go, but that looks pretty good to me. So now we'll go ahead and uh, let this sit for a while so the pipe uh, dope can cure and then we'll look at what we have to do next to fill up the system again. Okay, the new valve sat uh, overnight so I'm going to go ahead and open up the valves to repressurize the boiler here. So I will start by opening up my makeup water valve up top here. There's a regulator here that should add up only to 12 PSI. And that line comes into the main line here with another valve. We'll open that, hear the water go in. So I'll let this fill up for a while, then I'll open up these two on the pump side of the boiler um, once we get up to pressure. So all I do now is watch this gauge here. It should get up to, you know, about 12 is where it should top out at, but I'll just watch it to make sure, and then open up the other valves. All right, my pressure's up above 10. That looks good to me, so we're gonna call this project done. I hope this video helps you out. Thanks for watching.